Let us worship God. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light, and rulers to the brightness of your dawn. They shall come from Sheba, bringing gold and incense, singing the praise of God. O God, who by the leading of a star did manifest your only begotten Son to the Gentiles, grant, we pray, that we which know you now by faith may after this life have the fruition of your glorious Godhead. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Join with me in the reading of our daily psalm, Psalm 100, the great centering psalm. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. We belong to the Lord who made us. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving. 
Go into the holy courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless God's name. For the Lord is good, whose steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Mighty God, by your power you created us, and by your goodness you call us to be your people. Accept the offering of our worship that every race and nation may enter your courts, praising you in song, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading from the Gospel of Matthew is the traditional reading for Epiphany. Uh, this is the last of the 12 days of Christmas, and in fact, in the Orthodox churches, it's Christmas Day. Um, I saw a reading this morning that I thought was prescient. One of the aspects of the Gospels we don't often uh, always look at, but are in the lectionary in the 12 days of Christmas are many of the stories like the slaughter of the innocents that often get passed over. And yet many of them have remarkable contemporary rings. And one theologian wrote this morning, on today the feast of the, feast of the Epiphany, I'm reminded that an insecure ruler named Herod was so threatened by the birth of Jesus that he tried to overthrow the result by pulling a hit out on a toddler. And I thought that um, spoke uh, a lot today. So hear the word of God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who's been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is shepherd to my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, the mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's always a good thing when you have a boy from Bethlehem uh, on before you on Epiphany. The town that I grew up in was founded by Moravian missionaries on Christmas Eve, 1741. And there's a little valley and the South Mountain, there is a star that shines all throughout Advent and through Christmastide. It was a wonderful place to grow up. But my thoughts uh, on this particular epiphany go back to five years ago when I was privileged to leave a study tour to the Holy Land. And it turns out that on Christmas, on Epiphany, on the 6th, we were at the Church of the Holy Nativity in Bethlehem of Judea, not of Pennsylvania. And about halfway of our time there, there were these four men with large hats who came down the center of the nave with these uh, large staffs that they just cleared out everyone. And then the patriarch of Jerusalem came 
in all his elegant vestments. I, I never had vestment envy until that particular day, such beautiful robes of red and gold, and uh, all these uh, other clergy were there, and the, the patriarch of Jerusalem came to celebrate Orthodox Christmas in that sanctuary. The, the original roots go back to the year 330 A.D., it was a singular memory for all of us who were there. And such a privilege to be reminded in this Christmas time that the light of the star still shines brightly as we seek to follow the Christ. From another trip to the Holy Land, I also have a strong memory. We were in what was called the Shepherd's Field, it's still in Bethlehem, not far. It was the first trip I led with the church and Dear, dear Tom Graham and Carol Ann led worship there in Shepherd's Field. And that tender-hearted Tom, just with tears coming down his face, reading the scriptures of the, the shepherds watching for this holy birth. What a wonderful memory and what a wonderful day as we seek to follow the Lord who's come. Come, let us join our hearts in prayer. The Lord be with you. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. The wise ones hurried from the east. They are the wise of the world. They're the ones wise in science, for they read the intelligent design of the stars. They're the wise ones of the economy, for they came with gold. They're the wise ones of politics, for they sought a king. There are delegates as we stand carrying all the learning of the academy, of the market, of the laboratory, of the halls of power. They worshipped him. They recognized that he called into question all that they treasured. So they yielded their best to him, their preciousness, their secret potions, their rich perfumes. And we stand alongside them with our wealth, our control, our smarts, our sophistication, our affluence. Give us freedom like theirs to yield, to worship, to adore, to have our lives contradicted. Give us grace like theirs to embrace the foolishness of the child, that the first will be last and the last first, that the humble will be exalted and the exalted humbled that we may lose the world and gain our lives. Give us the imagination like theirs to go home by another route, on the paths where foolishness is wisdom and weakness is strength and poverty is wealth. Make our new foolishness specific that the world might become through us new. Here are our prayers at the opening of the year for our world as the vaccine begins to combat the pandemic, our nation in the midst of our political strife, our city as we recover from the bombing, and ourselves as we lift before you the prayers on our hearts this day in the silence of the moment. Lord Jesus, unconquered light, your power has dawned upon the world with transforming love. Grant that we who greet you at this midday moment may be found faithful at day's end, and in that final day be gathered with all your children to the city whose light is the radiance of your face, for you reign in splendor now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
The God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. May the peace of Christ be with us all.